everybody, Mel here from Sewing with Mel. And the other day, my friend Janice, who likes to embroider more than she likes to sew, found a really cute tutorial to make Christmas tree bunting garland, okay? And she said, I really like it and I really think it's cute, but it's sewing, it's not embroidery. And I said, Janice, you can do this? in Design Center in your dream machine. So here I am today making a video to show everyone and Janice <laughs> how to um, make this really cute little garland. And I'm gonna show you the picture here in the video. Let's look at it. This tutorial is from So Dainty, S E W Dainty dot co dot uk and it is really super cute all right so here is mine it just has four on it because i haven't made any more than this let me turn it the other way that's backwards came out really cute i like it all right so you can do this on your dream machine you can do this on your luminaire you can do this on the quattro you can do this on the stellar so you can also do it in software um, anything that has Design Center on it, you can do it on. So let's get started. Okay, let's go to Design Center. All right. And let's go to our shapes so that we can choose the first shape to make a Christmas tree. So what are Christmas trees made out of? Triangles, okay? And you want just the outline. You don't want a fill shape. Okay, just the outline. Say okay. All right, now let's remember, this is the size of your biggest hoop. This would be a very large Christmas tree. This is our first one. Let's make it smaller. Let's make this be the top. So let's go to size. Okay, this one's going to make it a lot smaller. And you can see the size shrinking up here, okay? So let's make it pretty small, about an inch. And let's scoot him up here. All right, now say okay. Let's make another one. Now, we could go back to shapes, get another triangle, put the triangle in there, or you can duplicate that triangle. So as long as it has the red box around it, it's selected. We can go to duplicate and it made another one. So let's bring it down and if I stuck it right there, you could do that, but it's it, it would be a tall Christmas tree instead of a wide Christmas tree, okay? So let's make this one bigger. Go to size, and let's make it bigger. See how the arrows are going outwards? That's gonna make it proportionately bigger. So let's do that. That looks pretty good. And actually, I kinda like where it is, okay? so. Let's leave that one like that. Let's say okay, and let's do it again. Let's go to duplicate. Let's move it down. And let's put it right there for now. Let's make it bigger. Where is my size? Right there. Bigger. I like it. Let's move it down. I want it about where it was, like that. Now let's do one more. Okay, so let's say okay. Duplicate. Bring it down. Let's make it bigger. Oh, size. Bigger. And let's drop it down a tad. Okay. I kind of like that. Now, let's just hit OK. What do you do about all these lines in there? The whole inside needs to be gone. So let's make it bigger. Now look over here. See this red square? You can move the red square, or rectangle it is, so that you can see your whole design. Now, let's erase inside of that, okay? Erase. I'm going to use, that's a round one. I'm going to, I like the square one, so I'm going to use this one. 
Look at that. Now, don't get too close at the moment unless you can see what you're doing. I cannot quite see from way over here. I'm doing a pretty good job though. You don't want to mistakenly erase. Now, every time you lift it up, it's another thing. So this is your, re this is your undo. So it would undo the part that you just did without lifting it up, okay? It goes in um, sections. All right, so let's make this a little smaller. And this is still selected, so, okay. The problem is, is if you erase something and then say, I'll just go back in and draw it in, it never looks as good as when you did it the first um, way. Anything else over here? All right. So let's move this right there and let's zoom in. Where is it? There we go. Ooh, there we go. Now it's bigger and, but so is your eraser box. See that? Just carefully bring it over. See how I did that? Move this over here. There's one. It's big, remember? If you make your design bigger, the box gets bigger. The eraser gets bigger. Let's make it smaller. I see right here. So let's move my, um, let's select it. Make it bigger right there there it is all right eraser let's pick the little one that way it's a little more um technical a little more detail let's scoot this one over here and right there i need to erase perfect all right let's bring it back down what do you think? I'd say that's a Christmas tree. However, the Christmas tree needs a needs a, um, a trunk. Needs a trunk on it. So let's go to our shapes. Let's get this. Say okay. Now it's way too big, right? Let's go ahead and size it. Now, I want it to be kind of a rectangle down here. Okay, so let's do this. This is just going to make it smaller um, from the top and the bottom. Okay, now let's move it down here. And now let's use um, this one right here and this will bring this side in and this side in. Watch this. And then stop it wherever you think you like it. Now move it up here. Looks pretty good. Okay. So now, oops, oh, I was thinking that would deselect it. It doesn't. Let's put it back. Okay. Now say, okay. And now we want to erase that line in there. We just want a line that goes all the way around the tree and back down. Okay. So let's um, zoom in. Oops, wrong one, zoom in. All right, so now I see I got a gap in there. Okay, so let's move it up. Perfect. Deselected. I, wanted, I want to erase that line right there. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my eraser. And it's on the teeniest one. I'm going to use the next bigger one. Now remember, when I touch it, you're going to see how big your eraser is. Perfect. Look at that. Go carefully over without getting rid of your, your corner. Or you'll have to draw it back in or back up. And do it all again. All right. Let's zoom back out. Oh, look. There's your Christmas tree.
All right. So now what do you do? How do you how do you make it stitch like that? Well, what you're going to do, this is your line properties. OK, this would be your fill properties. We're not going to do a fill on this Christmas tree. We just want a stitching line all the way around the outside. So let's go into the properties. This is a satin stitch. This is a double. Um, I don't want to call it a double single stitch. It's it's not like a bean stitch because it doesn't it's it doesn't go back and forth and back and forth and forward at the same time. It just stitches around twice. That's what we want right there. OK, now you can also change the color here if you want to. Now you're going to put whatever color you want to in your machine so it doesn't matter. But changing the color helps you see that you did apply the stitches. So for grins, it's a green tree. Let's make it green. All right. Now you want to zoom in on this because you have to touch the line. OK, so let's zoom in. And it, I don't have to see the whole thing. I just because it's one long piece and it's all attached. I just need to touch one part of it. So let's make it even bigger. Now we can't see it. How about we go down here? There. All right. Now we've chosen our property. It's going to be green. Take your bucket. Select it. It's solid. Now let's see if I can do it without there look at that now zoom back out there's your tree the stitches have been applied okay so how big is this christmas tree it's pretty big if you figure this is the the size of your biggest hoop that's a big christmas tree so what if i wanted to make the whole thing smaller okay this right here it's selected this is our select key so let's draw around. It is now selected and let's make him smaller. Let's resize the whole thing. This key right here. Down he goes. Now look up here. You can see what size your Christmas tree is. Let's make it even smaller. Let's say I wanted a six inch Christmas tree. Whoop. Bigger. Almost. That's perfect. Let's just leave it right there and let's see. Okay. Now let's go to next. See, there are your stitches. OK. Now we're going to go to preview. Now this does say um, the My Design Center data will not be saved. OK to continue. Say yes. Um, you can go backwards. <laughs> it, it says you can't go backwards in the manual, but you can go backwards. If I hit return, it takes me back to Design Center and there's all my stuff. OK, so let's go back to preview. OK. All right, there is my outline of my Christmas tree. So then I would hit set. It's going to convert to the embroidery pattern and my Design Center will be exited. This is where you can't go back from. OK to continue to the embroidery edit screen. Yes. All right, embroidery. Now it would embroider out. OK, so remember, you don't have to just do one Christmas tree at a time. All right. You could add more Christmas trees. OK, but in order to do that, you need to save this to your memory. So let's save it. And let's just save it in the machine. OK, now what you do is you return. We're going to add another Christmas tree. You can do it that way. Let's do it that way. Let's look in our uh, machine pocket. There's the Christmas tree. Set. Now you have two Christmas trees. So you can put one up here. You can turn this one upside down if you have to so that they so you can get more in a hoop. OK, so let's rotate it. See, now you could move that one right next to that one. Now, don't put it too close because we're going to we're going to cut in between those and then we're going to use the pinking shears on the outside. OK. So let's see, say OK. You could also simply duplicate um, a Christmas tree. OK, so this one is selected. Look at that. 
the faster way to do it. You can do it again. And then just arrange them in the hoop so that you can do several at a time. And we'll go, we'll do that step next. Okay, we are ready to embroider, but I want to show you something first. So I added to my hoop a basting box. Okay, so I just have um, tearaway hooped here, but I want to know where my Christmas trees are going to embroider so that I don't have to put too big of a piece of fabric in there. Okay, here are my fabrics. All right. So by putting a basting box on there and then going ahead and stitching it out, I can put my fab I can cut my fabric a little bit bigger than the basting box and then stick it right where I need it to be and then baste it on there again because I don't want to hoop my fabric. It's, it wastes fabric and I don't want to do that, okay? So how did we put a basting stitch around that? Let me get my trusty purple thing. All right, so get out of this. We're going to go into embroidery, okay? Your basting box is in embroidery. All right. Now, go to edit. And it is right here with the flower in it. So let's do that. See the box? It went around right to the perimeters of where my design is going to stitch. Okay? So let's get out of this. Now, go ahead. Hoop your tear away and stitch out your basting box so you can cut your fabrics the right size. All right. So you will need one side of the Christmas tree, the other side of the Christmas tree, and some batting in between. They called it bunting <laughs> in, um, in the article that I read. Okay, so what you're going to do is on the front of the hoop, right here. I'm gonna lay the bunting down and the top of my, one, one side of my Christmas tree. It doesn't have to be the top, it's just one side of it, okay? Then what I'll do is I'm gonna flip, I'm gonna tape this down so it doesn't go anywhere. Then I'm gonna flip it over like that. And I'm going to put the other fabric for the back like that and I'll tape it all down. And like magic. <laughs> Video is magic, okay? And you don't really, you don't have to use a lot of tape. You just don't want the back or the front to move, okay? So let's go ahead. I wanna tell you too, I put green for the top and I have red thread in my bobbin for the back. So let's go ahead and load it up. Okay, this look, whoop, I just pulled it out. Okay, all rethreaded because I pulled it out. It's ready to embroider. Now don't forget, if you already stitched your basting, um, your, your basting stitch all the way around it, it would have gone to the next one. I reversed it so that um, it could start over. I wanna stitch that because I want that basting stitch to hold this fabric down, okay? So let's go. And just kind of watch it so that it stays smooth. Don't get your fingers in the way. All right, it's stitched the basting stitch. Let's look at it. Double check. Mm-hmm, front back. All right. Put it back in and let's let it stitch out the Christmas trees. Okay, 
okay all finished let's pull it out check it out christmas trees in green thread on red christmas trees in red thread on green all right so now we're gonna pop it out of our hoop okay let me put my hoop down sorry about that okay now we're going to cut these out now it's up to you you can take your regular scissors and cut them out and just leave some room which is what i'm going to do so let's uh let's do that i'm just going to give some room in between and get one out so i can show you see i left enough room in there that i could separate them like that now here's something else too we're going to cut this with um with our pinking shears but remember this is in here so if you want to let's get this tape off you can pull your tear away out of there before you start making intricate cuts okay So let me get rid of the basting stitch there because it's just going to tear at the basting stitch. There, that's better. Okay. Reach in there. Carefully pull out the tear away. Okay. If you want to. You don't have to. See how it comes right out of there? That way you don't see it. It's not part of the stuff that you cut with your pinking shears. And I'm just gonna pink it now because it takes too long for me to do that. Plus I'm doing it far away with the camera. All right, so now let's use our pinking shears and we're gonna cut around this. So I'm gonna go like that. I'm doing it from far away, you guys. And actually, I'm going to turn it that way. I'm going to do one cut here. Like that. I haven't used my shears in a long time. Let's see? I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of this out. Come right back. All cut out. Isn't that cute? Okay, so now you need to um, figure out a way... However you're going to do it, um, you could get a little piece of ribbon and sew a little piece of ribbon on one side or the other, whichever way you want it to go. And then you can string your, your string through your ribbon in order to hang up your Christmas trees on, on the string to make the bunting. If you could hot glue it, you could sew it. I know my friend Janice does not like to sew. So she may get the hot glue out and just glue herself a little loop on there. So cute. Let me finish the rest of them. Okay. I sewed mine to my string with gold thread. Actually, that's backwards. Let's do it this way. Looks better. Nope, that was not backwards. I can't tell. Either way, it's really cute whether it's backwards or forwards. It kind of doesn't matter because you have fabric on either side. All right. I hope everybody has a great holiday and I hope you enjoy making little Christmas tree garland.